Welcome to Kids for Kids Academy. We are so excited to be recognized by the Florida Department of Health for our exemplary farm to early care and education nutrition program. Our Smart Start Healthy Initiative provides our students with organic meals cooked on site in our school kitchen. Research tells us that children who grow their own vegetables learn to love them and in turn eat more vegetables. We have found this to be true at Kids for Kids Academy. Our farm to table garden program provides opportunities for all of our children ages one to eight to plant in our school garden and enjoy tasting the fruits of their labors. This year, our students tasted peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, lettuce, and tomatoes picked by our own students and prepared on site in our very own kitchen. Our older kids also perform field studies in the garden. They integrate math and science skills using the garden as their outdoor classroom. Come along with me and take a stroll to our garden and get a closer look on how we use our garden as our outdoor classroom as we teach healthy habits early on. Studies show that kids who grow their own vegetables eat more vegetables. At Kids for Kids Academy, preschoolers plant in raised beds and inside concrete blocks. Each class plants, decorates, and tends to their own bed. Plants are watered using recycled rainwater collected in rain barrels. Students use the garden as their outdoor classroom. They complete field studies to count, measure, weigh, and compare data as they practice simple math skills. All right, we're coming to you live from our garden in Kids for Kids Academy. Four, our four-year-olds are doing field studies in the garden. Let's see, let's see. They are counting five. how many green peppers there are five they have. Green peppers, guys. Take a peek. They're huge. In this line, we're going to write five. Huge Look, green guys. peppers in the garden. They just finished counting the tomatoes over here. They counted how many red and how many green. Our cauliflower is coming in nicely here. Look at the five. Excellent. What about yours? Let me try the square. Okay, we have more peppers here in the boat. Now, now you're going to be counting how many red tomatoes are on the plant. We're also counting how many lettuce plants we have. And then they are measuring the distance across the broccoli. In future explorations, they will be looking at these red peppers that are not red yet, but they are starting to turn to red. Lots of peppers here. We're also going to measure the length of the peppers. They have their watering cans set up. We get all of our water from the rain in these rain barrels. Next time they come, they are going to count how many heads of cabbage. They're going to add how many in the first bed to how many in the second bed to get a total. Then they're going to come over to our three broccoli beds. They will count how many in each bed and come up with the total. They will also measure the distance across the broccoli, count how many leaves. They'll also look at our hibiscus. They'll identify the color of the hibiscus and count them. Then they will count the number of coleus and marigolds that we have. So lots of math going on in our outdoor garden. Here are Kids for Kids. They also looked at our mutant tomato plant. They looked at the tape measure. They were able to see that it is 60 in inches high. Years. And then they went in and counted all of the red and green tomatoes. They're gonna to come over here to plant E. They're gonna measure the height 
and also count how many tomatoes. Thanks for joining us. Our children ages four and up complete a garden field study journal. Page one of the journal, you will find a photo of the child for the cover. They will also measure how many green and red tomatoes they find on the plants, and they will use snapping cubes to find the sum total. On this page, students also measure the green and red peppers and count how many are in the bed. They will also count the yellow flowers and learn that those yellow flowers will turn into green peppers. In page two of the garden journal, the students use tape measures to measure the height of the tallest and shortest tomato plant. They will also count the number of green and red tomatoes as well as how many heads of lettuce are in the bed. They will use their tape measure to measure across the broccoli as well as the length of peppers. Finally, the students will count how many coleus plants are in the garden and add how many heads of cabbage are in the two beds. On page three of the garden journal, students will count how many heads of broccoli are in all three beds. They will add the three numbers together using snapping cubes to come up with a total. They will also count the number of flowers on the hibiscus plant and write the color of the flower. Finally, students will count the number of marigold plants that they see in the beds, as well as the number of green tomatoes and peppers. On page four of the garden journal, students will continue to count peppers and tomatoes and other plants in the garden. They will also count the number of turtles living in the garden and have an opportunity to draw pictures of different plants in the garden. The four page garden journal takes about six weeks to complete and students answer one or two questions each time they visit the garden for watering and observation. We had a bountiful harvest. Our students picked lettuce, tomatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, and peppers. Our cook, Miss Maria, prepared them in the kitchen and the students love tasting them. Look at all the delicious things we grew in our garden at Kids for Kids Academy. At Kids for Kids Academy, our Smart Start Healthy Initiative and our organic meal and garden program teaches children healthy of habits planting from is the underway. Start. So far, we have marigolds to be used as our natural pesticide. Our turtles, peaches, and cream are supervising the process. Along the fence, we have our tomatoes. We do all of our planting in concrete blocks. Over here, we have our peppers planted by Purple Door. Oh, looky here. We're gonna teach the children that the yellow flowers will be peppers and hiding under here. We already have some. Over here we have our zucchini. The yellow flowers is where the zucchini will come. Okay, over here we have green zucchini squash. We have beans over here that were planted in the cup and then transplanted. Over here we have our cucumbers planted by Gold Door. And over here we have our yellow squash planted by Silver Door. And along the fence, Orange Door has planted green peppers. Miss Marta is helping her class put our tomatoes in. Then along the fence here, Miss Anna's class did tomatoes. So now we're just going to kind of give you an overview picture of the whole garden. Hmm, I wonder what we're going to plant in this bed. Thanks for visiting the garden 
at Kids for Kids Academy. Oh, by the way, you see we used this little recycled boat someone was throwing away to hold our soil. Have a great day. Okay, everyone. Today is going to be a review lesson about what you have learned about plants. Now, I know you have learned a lot about plants. You, you learned about the parts of the plant as well as what plants need to survive. So who can raise their hand and tell me one part of a plant? Jelani. The roots. Okay, the roots. Okay, thank you, Jelani. And who can tell me what is the purpose of the root? What is the purpose? Audrey. Okay. What is the purpose of the root? Uh, what is what is the job of the root? Hold that. Uh, go ahead. Uh, to get the water and the nutrients. Yes. So the root gets the water and the nutrients and passes it up the plant. What else is a function of the root? What else? Chloe. Um, it gets the food so it can um, grow the stem. Okay. It sends food to the plant. What else? Something else about the root. Something else about the root. Yes. The water goes through the roots. Water goes through the roots. Excellent. Noah? The, the, the nutrition goes through up to the leaves. Yes, the root, nutrition goes through the roots of the leaves. But what about, what does the, the root do to the plant? It keeps it in one place. It keeps it in one place. That's excellent. Now, Audrey, you told me a second part of the plant. What was the second part that you just told me? Um, the stem. The stem. Who can tell me what is the purpose of the stem? The stem. Ethan. To keep the plant straight. Okay, the stem helps to keep the plant upright and straight. Good. What is another part of a plant besides the root and the stem? Yes, sir. Me? Yes. The flower? The flower is a part of the plant. And sometimes, can we eat the flower? Yes. Yes. And what is that part of the flower that we eat? What is that called? What is that called? So many people. Yes. Honey. Sorry? Honey. Um, we do get honey. Um, not, hang on. Hold that thought. What is something, we, an example of something that is a flower that we eat? Yes. Um, like an orange tree? Uh, an orange, orange tree. right? So any fruits or vegetables usually come from the flower part of the plant, okay? Now, let's talk about uh, what plants need to survive, and then we're going to take a closer look at these plants. What is something plants need to survive? So, to survive, yes? Soil. Soil, okay. What else does plant do plants need, Alejandra? Water. Water. And what else do plants need? Yes. Uh, water. Soil, water. What else? What, what else? Air. Air. What else? What else? Woo! This is really hot. This is really hot. Amabi. Sun. The sun. So you guys know everything about the plants. Now, we are going to be planting these plants in the garden. So. These are starter tomato plants. Can you see real close, Miss Sammy? Okay, and what a farmer did is they put seeds in a container and those seeds started to grow. And what is this part? A stem. The root. The root. Okay, now everybody pick up your hand lens. Okay, sometimes it helps to close one eye. If you're the person on the right, please pick it up and hold it. Person on the right, pick it up and hold it so that you and your partner can look at the root. So hold it from here. Go ahead, hold it from here. Take a look at the root. Isn't it right from here? Which one am I? right? No, she's right. Remember the roots are going to anchor the plants in the ground. It's going to hold them in the ground. Look at this side. Look at the roots. Not at the roots. Okay. Now take a look at the stem. Stem. Kind of gently. Both of you feel the stem. The stem is harder than the leaves, right? Because it has that job to hold the plant up. Feel the stem. Okay, so feel how hard the stem is. Oh, 
somebody so just made an observation. Good. It looks like there's a little hair on the on the stem. That's right. yeah. See if you can see those little hairs with your hand Oh, he says there's a little hair on the leaves too. Now let's look at the leaves. Go ahead, feel the leaves. Feel how soft the leaves are. They have hair too. And also, I know this is going to be. Listen, I know this is going to be a little hard with your mask. So you could leave your mask on, but smell the leaves. If you are holding your plant, go ahead and put the plant down for a moment. Okay? And everybody look this way. So, in a moment, Miss Sammy's class is going to go out to the garden. You're going to carry one of these with you. You're going to find the bed where you already planted, where it says silver door one, and around the outside, there's little holes in the concrete blocks. You're gonna take a shovel, you're gonna open a hole, a little bigger than this, you're gonna put it in, and then put the soil around it. Yeah. Now, you should not see this part in the hole, so it's gonna look like this, okay, above the soil. Okay. What do you need to do after we put that in there? Water, water, it. It. water, it. water, water it. it. So then you're going to get your watering can and water it. And before you go, I'm going to ask Miss Sammy to have you make a prediction. Does anyone know what a prediction is? Yes. yes. A, guess. a guess. I want you to make a prediction. How long, how many days it will take. Listen. Listen, listen. The prediction is how many days will it take for the first yellow flower to come? And do you know what's going to happen after the yellow yeah, flower comes? The garden, the seeds, no. The tomato. The tomato. No. So everyone's going to make that prediction. Let's write down today's date, Miss Sammy and Miss Audrey. Write down their predictions so that we can see how many days they predict it will take for the yellow flowers to come. And then after we see the yellow flowers, we're going to make another prediction of how many days we think it will take before the first tomato comes. Okay? Jelani? Well, I think it's fatter on the bottom because it needs to be stronger to hold the flowers. Okay, everyone put everything down. Okay, you know how we said that Sometimes you get fruits and vegetables from plants. Yes. Well, we get other things from plants. Does anyone know what this is? No. What is it? Cotton. Cotton. So on my on a trip that I took, I was in Georgia and we passed by a field and the cotton was growing right on the plants. So I have these pictures and these pictures are of me and the field picking the cotton. Mm -hmm. But everybody look at that. I'm going to pass this picture around. Look at that big yellow blob. What is it? Oh, they have a special machine that picks the cotton and rolls it into a big ball so that you can make things like clothing. Clothing is made of cotton. So it's not just the cotton that you find that looks like this. Socks and things. So um, on the way out, I'm going to let everyone touch the cotton. You can feel how soft it is. And know that we get other things from plants besides fruits and vegetables and flowers. We get things like cotton to make clothes. Oh okay, everyone, great job.